Mr. Chancellor, Vice Chancellor, members of the academic staff, distinguished uh, graduates, family members and friends, in our mana, in our reo, erao rangitira na, tenako to, tenako to, tenako to katoa. As a public servant all my life, I think I know well the signs. When the boss calls directly, it's either very big or very bad. So when the vice chancellor was on the telephone and all the way to Samoa, I began to imagine a problem with my student record by which I would have no place on this podium. But the vice chancellor was in his uh, polished uh, manner and uh, most generous. He was almost convincing in fact, but why me remains a lingering thought. Mr. Chancellor, in humility, I thank you and I thank the University Council for this award as I thank others uh, for their extremely kind commendation and support. It is honor most profound uh, for me as it is for my family and my country. I'm particularly touched uh, that my Prime Minister, the Honorable Tula Epa Sailele Malielengoi, the recipient of the same award from the uni this university, is here. He surely cannot expect of me another Joseph Parker performance, <laughs> uh, but I think uh, the Prime Minister shares with me deep gratitude to the university for this very high honor. I did not attend my graduation. Uh, by the terms of my scholarship, the government timekeepers ensure that I was not an overstayer uh, and that I returned to Samoa at the end of my final examinations. So it is honor in double measure to take part in this wonderful ceremony of color and distinction and to be able to offer to all uh, graduates of the four faculties my own uh, very warm congratulations and very high admiration uh, for some of the outstanding range of PhD researches we have been given a glimpse of. We all know that university life would be measurably more difficult without the sustaining support of family and dear ones. This graduation uh, celebration is thus of thanksgiving and grateful acknowledgement of the commitment and sacrifices of parents, family members, and friends. Rightly, we can celebrate and be thankful that in this country, the right to education and the opportunity to be educated is a reality. For elsewhere, others elsewhere around the world, including our Pacific region, far too many, especially among women and children, are without proper access to education or otherwise denied altogether the benefits of education. I was at Victoria at a time when law students from the second and third years were required to gain practical experience by working in private law offices or elsewhere like the courts, both of which I did. It meant attending lectures early morning or in the late hours. Possibly it is why there were occasional disparaging claims that Vic was just a night school, notwithstanding that even then Victoria was clearly the leading law school. Looking around now, one is in awe of the extensive growth and developments in, in what is clearly a university that is modern and strategic in direction and with a scholastic record to show internationally acclaimed for its teaching and innovative programs. 
I was among the first crop of Samoan students abroad in the 1960s. While I had come to Victoria hoping to study for a science degree, I chose in obedience to my father who had suggested that I might consider a, a law degree. Well, as it turned out, it was not a walk in the park. For on important aspects, I found my chosen field of study confusingly new to a Pacific mind like my own. But it was a task that had to be completed with the constancy of family and with the inspiration of teachers. And that, I think, is the essence of it all. Education is responsibility to oneself as well as to family and to country. I have been extraordinarily fortunate in having been taught at Victoria by some of the most outstanding legal scholars, one of whom of international eminence is here, the Right Honorable Sir Kenneth Key. And I have taken from the, this university the very best of education, not simply in law, but on essential ground, grounding in the greater principles and values which underpin the rule of law. In my career, I have been privileged to work with graduates from Victoria who have stood out among the very best in the world for their stand on some of the big issues of our time international criminal justice, developments in international law, and for the protection of the global commons, agitating for decolonizations and against nuclear weapons. And so, dear graduates, you will take from Victoria, along with your earned qualifications, a great deal more. You will become the flag bearers of university standards and traditions of the highest order but you will also be substantially empowered for education is the most potent force for transformation and change. You will have in your hands the power to transform people, society, and nations. From here, it will be the beginning in the larger reality of life and the choices you need to make. In the early stages of my own work, the choices were largely made for me for I, I had returned to government service in the office of the Attorney General, consisting of the grand total of two qualified lawyers, the attorney and me, which meant that I was in the legal deep end from day one, and the challenges and the pressures came marching in, not in single file, but often in battalions. A great way for metal to be tested, but in truth, in the loneliness of a small community setting, it was my university training which provided sustaining discipline and confidence in my own powers. There is no assurance for any of us against the unknowns of tomorrow. But you can be assured there will be no shortage in the challenges to come your way. Humanity demands of each of us some part in helping to address the challenges of a very highly connected global age, key among which would be global peace and security, growth and development, respect for human rights, and the rule of law. Within our own Pacific region, basically you can pick from a full range of demanding issues sustainable human and economic development, law and order, protection of Pacific environment and resources, international criminal activity across the region, and others. The dangers of climate change are all now too frequent and too devastating, with, especially for the poor and the most vulnerable, disproportionate consequences for their security and their fundamental rights. There is therefore much out there to challenge and to motivate and enough of substance to engage your talents and commitment. Let me then wish you 
well. You will have laid careful plans for the next steps, no doubt, edged by dream lines. May there be fair wind. May there be good fortune for you all. From what I have seen, it is a world of infinite promise. Take its offerings in full measure. Take it with the surety of your values. Through the integrity and the dignity of your actions, you will give dignity to others. Kia ora, Thank you.